Hey everyone, welcome to the latest installment of Phoenix Children's Live. I'm your host, Peter Balistrieri, Senior Brand Manager with Phoenix Children's Hospital. How you doing? Uh, today, we're wrapping up March, which is National Kidney Month, and here at Phoenix Children's, we're approaching kidney health with uh, not only clinical excellence, but also from a data standpoint as well. And here to talk about that today is, is Dr. Conwell Kerr. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Peter, for inviting me. Well, definitely. Fun. Definitely. So before we get started, uh, as I always say, give us a like, give us a love. There's comments down below. You can, as we're live, ask questions, and my colleague Jenny will kind of uh, filter those out and ask us questions um, during the broadcast. Otherwise, if you want, we can put them in there, and then we'll get to them after the, after the segment. So again, we love the questions. Please, please send those over to us. Um, as I said, it's, we're just wrapping up National Kidney Month. Um, kind of an interesting standpoint from what we're doing in nephrology here at PCH, uh, or Phoenix Children's Hospital, as we call it. Um, clinical excellence, but also, we're doing things through data as well, Indeed. big data, right? Indeed. Indeed. But before we get there, so those are kind of the two areas that we're going to talk about today. But before we get there, let's find out a little bit more about Dr. Kerr. Well, uh, the first disclaimer is that uh, I'm a pediatric nephrologist, which means that I deal with kidney disease in children. Mm. And uh, my training in pediatrics occurred in New York uh, at the Montefiore Hospital uh, and Medical Center, which is part of the uh, Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Okay. And I trained in pediatric nephrology at the Case Western University in Cleveland uh, at the Rainbow Baby Children's Hospital. Oh. Uh, I have traveled a lot in the country. My first job was in Milwaukee, actually. Um, you know, I love Milwaukee. <laughs> you know, we talked about that uh, off the air. That's excellent. Uh, at the Medical College of Wisconsin, which is also... Uh, which also includes children's hospital there. Mm. Um, and I've also traveled to Texas, the Univers University of Texas, um, and spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. at the Children's National, uh, almost 27 years there, wow. uh, before moving to Phoenix about a couple years ago. Excellent. And, and you love the weather, I'm sure. I certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess one, one question to follow up uh, on that great kind of uh, timeline that you gave is why, why kids, why children, um, uh, in terms of where you kind of focused your, your life and life's sure. work? Sure, uh, I always loved kids. Um, and uh, a connected question is why nephrology too? Yeah. Um, uh, it's interesting uh, that my early impressions of kidney disease in children were pretty bad. Uh, one of my... Um, schoolmates actually had a kidney disease, oh. which uh, now I know what it might have been, yeah. um, but he died. Mm. And that was um, in early 60s, I would say, and technology had not yet evolved uh, to the point where we are today. Um, and that is how I got interested, because I love kids, and then this had impacted me in terms of going into nephrology and the two came together as pediatric nephrology. Yeah, it had an effect on you then. It certainly did. Yeah. It certainly did. Well, I, I think that's that's a great background and I think because you know, a lot of people want to know, okay, why pediatrics instead of the adult medicine? Sure. And, and let's talk really quickly but before we go uh, into the clinical things. Um, what are the kidneys? Uh, and you know, for for the for the neophytes out there, sure. myself even sure. included, tell us a little bit about what the kidneys do for a, for a human. Well, the kidneys, as we recognize, um, make urine, but there are a lot more complex issues uh, that the kidneys have, have to function in. For example, there are lots of hormones that kidneys either make or uh, create an environment to work within the body, uh, of which vitamin D is a prominent one. Mm -hmm. The uh, erythroplatin is the second one, which actually is really important. All the red cells that are floating in our body, mm -hmm. they have to be uh, kick-started from the mo marrow uh, by this hormone called erythroplatin, which is actually produced in the kidney. So someone who has kidney dysfunction, both of these elements get kind of um, um, imbalanced, mm -hmm. to say. So there are problems in, in hormonal aspects. But kidney also is really important, if you think about it, all of our sodium, the potassium, all of the nutritional balances, that micronutrient balance that is to be achieved by the body is maintained by the kidney. If you didn't have kidneys functioning the way they are supposed to, 
uh, then we might have either too much or too little of all of those electrolytes. So they're like a filter system. Uh, apart from filter, they have a little bit more function, um, you know, for example, to fine tune these elements. Yeah. Um, in addition, I think uh, kidneys are equally important in excreting the toxins that we produce on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, they may also modulate, are all equally important in eliminating some of the drugs that we take, medications. Yeah. Um, so, complex functions. So, I said in the beginning, it's, we're closing out National Kidney Month, um, but we're doing some amazing things clinically here uh, in terms of, of nephrology. Um, but let's start, let's start with, the, and let's start with clinical excellent, excellence. What is unique about our nephrology program? And uh, I think one of the, I heard you speaking on, on the phone the other day, and you were talking about kind of even just where we're situated in the United States. Uh, why don't we start there, but then kind of sure, talk about sure, what is amazing sure. about our, our uh, program. I can tell you my own look at the PCH um, Phoenix Children's Hospital when I was trying to come over here mm -hmm. was to look at where's the geography and what are the other institutions around it. And what I found was that between Dallas on the east end and uh, LA on the other end, uh, west side, um, there really isn't a whole lot of pediatric hospitals. And so from a geographic perspective, Phoenix Children's offers a very unique opportunity uh, for a large segment of geography to be covered. So I think that's one of our advantages. And the other thing that I have uniquely found here compared to East Coast, is that we have a huge amount of um, kidney disease due to kidney stones in and, children. And, and when you told me about this, it, that was incredible. Yeah. Tell, talk a little bit about that, because we actually created a program yes. based on our yeah. geography. Uh, uh, simply because we had so many patients coming in with kidney disease uh, resulting from kidney stones, um, we actually created a stone clinic uh, in collaboration with the um, urology division and uh, we are kind of bringing together all the specialties together we have a joint clinic where all of these patients can be provided with uh, unique perspectives from both the urologic aspect and the evaluation from a nephrologic perspective what needs to be done for the patient as a total uh, care so what does what what produces so many stones here sure I think the environment is, is to be blamed uh, in large part. I think we have a very hot environment here. Yeah. And um, when the urine becomes very concentrated, all of these elements that are excreted, the calcium, the phosphorus, and the oxalates, uh, they get very concentrated. Mm. And once they begin to form a nidus within the kidney, uh, then that nidus grows over time and leads to kidney stones. A lot of people think kidney stones are more of an adult um, yeah. uh, kind of a, a problem, but it, it is happening in children here, uh, right? Well, I, what I can tell you is that uh, uh, when I was in Washington, D.C., uh, where again, we had some decent number of kidney stones, um, but I have seen almost 10 times that wow. number here uh, within a very short time. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about um, where do we where do we see a lot of our, our kids? I mean, obviously we're getting a lot of children that are right from within the state, but do we see uh, kids coming here from you know sure. all over? Sure, we do see on the northern end uh, patients coming from Nevada. Mm -hmm. On the east side, we can go as far as New Mexico, and on the west side, from the eastern part of California, we train uh, that uh, population. Why would, uh, why would a family bring their child to our, our particular uh, children's hospital here? I guess their reputation of Phoenix Children's. <laughs> See how I threw that over to you? <laughs> um, no, it's a great program. Um, we'll get more into kind of, uh, um, kind of the, uh, um, the clinical side, or the, I'm sorry, the, the data side of things. Sure. But a, a few more things. Um, the kind of the environment has also um, helped us customize our program a little bit. We talked about sure. the kidney stones. But let's talk about, too, um, the population. Uh, I think you had mentioned uh, in, in a phone call, like I said not too long ago, that we, we service a, a large groups of different types of races and, and cultures. Talk a little bit about that, too, and how that has customized our program. One of the other things that is fairly unique here is the large Indian population in this geographic terrain. Mm -hmm. um, and what that 
leads us to do is to look at the conditions that are either preventable or existent. And for example, uh, obesity is fairly common. And as a consequence of that, they are also prone to developing diabetes. They're also prone to developing hypertension. And uh, what we have done is to approaching those pa set of patients, we have actually created a new program within PCH in conjunction with uh, endocrinology to specifically address the obesity and hypertension issue. We have a joint clinic, just like the Stone Clinic. Yeah. Uh, we have a provider actually permanently placed in that clinic so that those patients coming in with obesity uh, will be given the endocrinologic um, teaching, advice, nutrition, uh, all of that, in addition to looking at their hypertension profile do they need to be treated, do they not need to be treated, right. and what else can be done for them. Right. That's amazing. Um, let's talk about kind of the, the, the dialysis side of things. We, we are pretty uniquely uh, serviced here in terms of what we offer for pediatric dialysis. Can you talk a little bit about that? Too? Uh, this is, again, unique in uh, PC Edge, which is that it is the only pediatric unit for hemodialysis in Truman in the entire state. Okay. Uh, so we cater to uh, children and exclusively to children. Uh, that is something uh, which is very unique. Yeah. So the department has uh, had a, a rebirth of sorts. Yes. Um, let's talk about who kind of makes up this department and, and kind of a, well, who the all-star team is sure. here for, for nephrology. Sure. One of my first tasks uh, coming in was, uh, um, in fact, uh, our CEO, Bob Meyer, uh, verbalized it too, is to recruit the faculty that would uh, bring in excellence and I guess a lot of diversity of, uh, of clinical um, uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and in the very first year, uh, it was a tough challenge uh, because uh, the previous nephrology um, Avatar had almost disappeared mm. uh, from from PCH, and uh, we had to create a new um, um, the entire new faculty here. So mm -hmm. first year was spent entirely on that, and we have uh, with with a lot of pride I can tell you we have collected a group of nephrologists within PCH who are from as diverse um, geographic um, areas from for example for example. Um, we have Dr. Ratz, who came from Pittsburgh Children's Hospital, mm -hmm. Dr. Terman, who came uh, from uh, Oklahoma, uh, Dr. Sharma, who came from um, uh, Philadelphia Children's Hospital, so on and so forth. So the, the number of people that we have recruited are um, from very top-line um, pediatric nephrology programs who are clinically savvy um, and, and can provide excellent care. Well, and that has translated into um, the U.S. News and World Report badge that we've received over yes. the last couple of years. Yes. Uh, talk about wh why that's important to you. Well, it, it, in a lot of ways, uh, it is peer recognition. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, once the, the ranking um, is elevated to a point where you are in the top 10, for example, uh, it does provide a lot of, uh, um, I guess, recognition within the care group of pediatric nephrology. And I have to say, with uh, again a lot of pride, um, uh, that while I was in DC for uh, almost 27 years, uh, I did raise the ranking from almost 49th <laughs> to top 10. Yeah. So I want to uh, to again uh, replicate that here in PCH. Yeah, that's excellent. So well, let's talk about that. Let's talk sure. about some more of your accomplishments, some more of the, the, the team's accomplishments, and kind of what are the what are the goals maybe um, in the next maybe two to five years? Well, I think uh, continuing on the path to um, clinical excellence is one thing that I would put premium on, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that has to, we have to provide the best care that's available with the current technology to the patients that come to PCH. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. But beyond that, I think I would like the dialysis unit uh, at PCH to become a five diamond recognition status. Which is, that, is that the top of it, the line? That is the top of the line. Mm -hmm. And that does require some quality enhancement. Some, And we have some challenges. For example, uh, we 
probably need a new dialysis in it, and hopefully it, it has been actually approved, but we'll see. You heard it here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's excellent. Um, um, yeah, so I mean, even looking out, is that is that kind of in that two to five year plan uh, there? That is within that two to five year. Um, okay. Plus, <clears throat> I have spent my entire life in academic mm-hmm. pediatric nephrology, um, and therefore I have a lot of um, respect for and, and longing to be in that academic group. And I would like our group here at PCH to excel in that as well. In yeah. fact, along those lines, I can tell you that uh, last year, which was the very first year of gathering all of the nephrologists together, we submitted four abstracts to the American Society of Nephrology. Two of them were presented wow. uh, as posters. So Yeah, that's excellent. So uh, let's, uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit. As sure. I said, we were talking about the clinical excellence sure. standpoint. Sure. Uh, one of the most amazing things is, as I started working with Dr. Kerr and, and with um, Dr. Vija and, and the whole nephrology program is kind of this idea around using data yes. to uh, kind of have better clinical outcomes sure. and, and kind of just better care overall. Sure. Um, and what I might be talking about is something you, you may have read if you're in nephrology circles Uh, We've had a couple articles already uh, posted on this, written about us, Um, but we have a kind of a dashboard um, that we have developed here, and I want you to to go into detail about it. Um, It's it's an acute kidney injury dashboard, but I wanted to talk a little bit about how it came about and what it does, and and it's it's really cool for the for uh, the people that have not heard about it. It's almost like Big Brother for For kidneys, (laughs) like for kidney health. That's it. Um, but let's talk a little bit about sure. this because I think it's amazing to be able to use data and, and something that was created right here with our, with our IT group sure. for better care for yeah. our kids. Let me tell you the origins of this whole thing. Uh, actually, um, within three to four months of my being here, I was asked to actually review the chart of a patient who had developed kidney injury while he was admitted to the hospital for appendectomy. Hmm. And try to find out what happened, was it preventable? And having looked at that kiddo, uh, the thought process that evolved in my mind was, um, how can we prevent this from happening? Kids who are coming into the hospital for a variety of complex reasons. Could be something completely uh, not totally related to kidneys, right? Not, not related. For example, somebody might be in shock, for example. Mm-hmm. It, can, it can lead to kidney injury. Mm-hmm. Or you receive antibiotics for a condition that is life-threatening uh, and then develop toxicities in the kidney. Again, these are some of the things that can cause kidney injury, which may be totally unrelated to anything underlying. Yeah. Um, so how do we prevent that in, in kiddos who are coming out of the hospital? Um, and as we looked into that, we talked with IT, do you have data? Mm-hmm. And they said, we definitely have data. <laughs> That's what they do, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, um, and Dr. Vaidya was extremely uh, helpful. Uh, I had a, uh, actually known Dr. Vaidya. He was a former fellow at uh, Children's National when I was there many years ago. So you had some, so some I had history. Some, so I had some uh, you know, personal, uh, I guess, uh, knowledge of him and, yeah. and what he could do. And so I approached him, and we then looked at how can we devise a, a um, basically, we started with an almost like an Excel sheet. Yeah. And how do we improve upon this? And in the end, what we developed is phenomenal, which is that every single child who is admitted into the hospital, 300 and some odd patients, right. um, are looked at continuously throughout the day uh, from a clinical as well as laboratory parameters perspective yeah. so that all of those labs that are done uh, for them with for totally different reasons but we have access to that because we have that big data and then we calculate how is their kidney function then we are linking that with are they exposed to any of the uh, antibiotics or a- other drugs that might actually cause uh, kidney injury for example somebody who may get uh, a CAT scan with a contrast may be at risk of developing kidney injury. Wow. So uh, all of that information is linked with their kidney functions, which are almost continuously uh, updated. We're looking at that data every six hours, yeah. and 
Every oh wow, every every six, six hours. hours, yes, yeah. uh, and uh, updating the dashboard. Plus, as we went along, I I, I was really uh, looking for some other help in terms of preventing these things, yeah. and uh, luckily. Uh, we were able to actually uh, bring in a test which can look at early um, damage resulting from whatever is going on in the kiddo. For example, kid goes to cardiac surgery, uh, has a clamp down, and comes back, now has kidney injury. Yeah. Uh, how do you diagnose those things very early on? So we actually developed a test uh, called NGAL test, uh, and the lab is actually doing that here at PCH with a very quick turnaround of uh, almost an hour, we can get the test done. So when the kid comes out of, for example, surgery or has just been brought in with a shocky body right. uh, uh, in the PICU or ICU, we can look at both urine and the blood and see whether or not there's alteration suggesting that there is kidney injury. So not only can we look from the big data perspective, but we have added other things that can help us in early diagnosis. And that's a key, right? Early yes. diagnosis. Early diagnosis. Because yes. you can hopefully correct the problem yes. at that point. Yes. Yeah. And it may sometimes be do more fluids. Yeah. Or raise the blood pressures. Things like that. Yeah. More of a simple. Exactly. Problem. Or do things. not give a nephrotoxic antibiotic, which might uh, harm the kidneys. Right. Some kids it might be fine, other kids it right. would hurt, exactly. depending on what else is going on exactly. with, the, with the situation. Exactly. Okay. So this is pretty groundbreaking. Is this, are we kind of one of the only hospitals that are doing this, or are people kind of jumping onto this boat, or how, how does that look? It's beginning to be applied in the adult medicine a little bit more mm -hmm. um, than pediatrics. I know, because I have good friends at Cincinnati Children's, uh, they have actually published something on that, but not on the scale that we have actually. Yeah. We have created this mega dashboard, which I think is very unique. Yeah, and you know, I, I do love this, and I will give us a lot of kudos, because it wasn't a, a third-party company that developed this either. This, this was our IT group, uh, our IT group with the help of the of the physicians and the doctors yes, and, and, yes. and really looking at this and being collaborative about yes, it. Yes. And that's, I think, some of the most amazing things. I mean, we go back to some of the amazing things they've also done, you know, the cameras that we have yes. here in our PICU and our NICU yeah. and all that. Yeah. That's all from our IT Absolutely. folks. So Absolutely. it's, I think it's a key to have um, the physicians working hand in hand with the, with the IT department. True. So kudos to our IT department on that as well. Well, I, I can tell you that without Dr. Fadio's help, this would not have been possible. Yeah, and it's great to have him in our corner on Yes, that. indeed. So, um, we'll have other uh, children's hospitals approached you on, you know, how did you get this started? And, and you well, know, um, kind of give, give sure, us the guidance. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, um, when we presented the abstract uh, last year, in November, actually, mm -hmm. um, there were many institutions that were interested in uh, looking at what we had done and uh, how this could be translated. Unfortunately, one of the things that it's peculiar about the EMRs is that EMRs are sort of patented technology um, and transferring this from one type of an EMR to the next may be a little bit hard, but I think the basic principles can be utilized yeah. in any system. So kind of just to wrap up um, in terms of um, being National Kidney Month and kind of that's an awareness of, of our, what our kidneys are, what they do, um, and, and for the families out there that have kiddos that are are um, you know might have some issues with their with their kidneys. Um, I I think I'd like you to kind of just kind of summarize why it's important um, for early for early intervention, but also why they should be um, considering bringing their 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 kiddos here because sure. I think it's really sure. important. Sure, uh, I think uh, what we see in pediatric nephrology is is a lot of um, developmental anomalies in kids, yeah. and therefore. Prenatal evaluation is really important for moms, yeah. and I would strongly urge that that is a, a first preventive strategy. Mm -hmm. What uh, does that mean? Does it mean making sure you're taking the vitamins? No, actually, it would mean you get your ultrasounds. Okay. Yeah. You have to get your ultrasounds. Yeah. And if there is an abnormality, and, and in fact, in DC uh, Children's, I had a program in collaboration with perinatologists where we would see. Uh, lots of um, uh, young moms to be yeah. uh, with prenatally diagnosed 
conditions which we would then be able to literally arrive at the time of birth to take care of. Yeah. So I, I think that is the first thing that I would say preventative uh, strategy ought to be. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing is the kidney failure or kidney dysfunction has very subtle signs. It may not tell you right on the face that I have kidney failure. But anytime you have high blood pressure, watch out. Growth failure is the second one. The third one is that kiddos who are supposed to be able to hold on um, to their urine at night, developing aneurysis in other words, wow. are never getting over it. Yeah. Um, it can be something. So bedwetting. Yes, yeah, bedwetting okay. uh, would be uh, one of the early signs. Okay. Uh, you know, those three are the big ones to look for. That's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. He knows his stuff, Dr. Conroy Kerr. Thank you for joining us today. Well, I really pleasure. appreciate it. it. Truly yeah. is a pleasure. Um, again, make sure you send us questions. We'll, we'll get those uh, out to you, our answers out to you as soon as we can. Thanks for joining us today. I just wanted to give a quick little uh, plug for the next Phoenix Children's Live. It's uh, celebrating nut Nutrition Month at Phoenix Children's. And so they're going to talk about, is gluten bad for you? Should you cut out sugar? So they're going to bust some nutritional myths and rumors. And that's going to be with uh, Chelsea Quinn and Grace Hatfield, and it's going to be with the host, uh, my colleague, Stacey McDermott. So hopefully you can join us, and thanks again, Dr. Kerr. I appreciate Thank you it. all. We'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.